Hi, this is Roger Majeski giving you another video on how to build your own preamp. The first one, if you want to go back and look, was called Design Your Own Tube Preamp. And now I just want to give you some tips on building. There's easy ways to build things and there's hard ways to build things. And if you're working with tubes, it can get a little frustrating. So I wanted to show you a nice way just to make a prototype and then even with a prototype you might plan ahead and put this into a nice box. This uh, is just a piece of 1 16th inch aluminum. We mounted four sockets on it, screwed them down, put a few spacers on it. The sockets are underneath. I just wanted to show you what it looks like before you get a lot of stuff on it. These are the filament wires. Uh, always wire the filaments first. Always wire anything that's going to be close to the bottom here first and then you build it up in layers as you go out. So generally it's things like grounds. These are grounding these pins. This is the filament connection. There would be another filament pair over here, another pair here to hook them all together, and then some wires to go off to your filament supply. You can also uh, drill some extra holes if you want a volume control, some kind of switch, some sort of inputs and outputs. So let me show you one that has the stuff on it. Now here's one that I built recently. This is a very interesting universal preamp for either moving coil, moving magnet phonograph cartridge or for tape reproduction. It's a very high gain amplifier made up of a few stages uh, but with a single feedback loop. It's a very interesting circuit. Uh, this was a piece of scrap aluminum. I mounted an input and an output jack on it and two tube sockets. Um, you must always need a switch for something. This is a switch that's actually allowing us to choose the gain. Uh, if you wanted to choose more things like multiple inputs or something, you might use the rotary switch. You could certainly put some more inputs there. Uh, this is only one channel, so in a way I've left half the space here for the other channel. So kind of plan ahead of how much you want to do. You might want to do these as mono sections. Whenever I make a new design and I'm fussing around with the circuit, there's really no point in trying to do the design in stereo right away. Just do one channel, get that working, get it the way you like it, and then duplicate it. If you're always working on two channels, you're doing twice as much work. So just get the sound you like. I don't think that you need to have two channels going to really judge the sound of, uh, of your unit. One really nice thing about this is, you know, typically if you have something like this with tubes in it and then you turn it upside down to work on, well, if there are four tubes, maybe it'll stand up okay on this, uh, using the tubes for legs, which isn't the greatest thing in the world, because after a while they get knocked around. So I just simply added some spacers here that are tall enough to clear the tubes, and some spacers on the bottom that are tall enough to clear all the electronic components. So when you work on it, it's like this, and you can solder and change things very easily. And when you're done and testing, you can turn it around like this. It's also high enough that you can get an RCA cable in there without bending it too much so you can have it hooked up while you're working on it. Also, uh, I, on the end here, I put a little terminal strip. These are very easily gotten anywhere. Uh, they just screw terminals and uh, you can put one wire on one side and then carry the other wire on the other side. I like to sometimes keep the colors the same. Uh, we have red for plus and green for minus here. And one tip that I would like to give you is the filament supply on a sensitive preamp like a microphone preamp or any kind of phonograph preamp is going to have to be DC. If you don't use a DC filament supply, you're going to have hum. And even worse, the hum will vary a lot from tube to tube, so you'll find some tubes that hum a little and some tubes that hum a lot. Now we have these wonderful little wall switchers, which you either get them from free from your friends or you buy them very cheaply for, on surplus. I wouldn't pay retail. This one is 12 volts at 1250 milliamps, so that's one and a quarter amps. The 12 volts is fine for a 12AX7, uh, but if you're using things like 60J8s, you might just put two of them together in series. You're going to have multiple tubes anyway, so just put them in pairs of series. It's fine to put heaters in series. You can put the 12 volt ones in parallel and mix them with the 6 volts in series. And if you do have an odd number of heaters, you can always put in a resistor to simulate the other 6 volt heater that you're going to have. The beauty of these things is they're extremely well regulated and they're reasonably low noise. The noise does vary from some units to the others, but in general, there's no real switching noise that comes out and you've got your 12 volts regulated and you're all done. A little bigger problem is the high voltage supply. So on my preamp, 
My high voltage supply comes to this double banana plug, and this double banana plug comes into a power supply, which I made, and looks like this. Uh, this has a variable voltage from 50 all the way up to 300. It has a power switch. It has an on switch for the B plus and an off for the B plus, which is very handy because otherwise you're turning the power on and off, and the, the power supply takes a little time to charge up every time you turn it off. So you just leave it on, and then when you don't want the B plus when you're resoldering the component, you just turn the B plus off. And a further thing that I did was to actually short the B plus with a resistor. So any capacitors you have in here that are connected to the power supply will get discharged. So you have the on, off, and short to discharge the capacitors, and you won't be shocking yourself quite so much. This power supply, by the way, is very low noise and very low impedance, and we'll be making these available to you. So thank you for looking, and thank you for all your support on the first video. Uh, we've had 20,000 views, and I appreciate those. And this video will be followed by another video and what we have on the whiteboard here is how to make a two-stage amplifier. And that will be our next video. Thank you.